A student learns that ionic compounds have significant covalent character when a cation has a polarizing effect on a large anion. So what are they talking about? So if I have a cation, so this is my cation, and then this is my large anion, my large anion right over here. And actually, let me do it this way. Let me make it a little bit clearer, because a cation still has electrons. So you have your nucleus here, of your cation, you have your electron cloud, you have your electron cloud of your cation, right over here. But you have fewer electrons than you have protons, so you're going to have a positive charge, and that's why we call it a cation. And the anion, it still has a positive nucleus, and has an electron cloud, I'm drawing a large anion here, a large, a large, a large anion right over here. That's electric electron cloud. But it has more electrons in the cloud than it has protons in the nucleus, so it has a negative charge. That is the anion. And what they're saying is, is you start to have significant covalent character. Remember, covalent bonds are where electrons are essentially shared between two atoms. When a cation has a polarizing effect on a large anion. So one, one way to think about it is, these el electrons that are out here, Well, they're going to want to get away from all their negative friends here. Negative charges repel each other, and they might want to spend close, more time closer to uh, this cation. And so they're going to start having covalent character. They're going to be more and more shared between the two. And there really is a spectrum between ionic bonds and covalent bonds. And over here, you might have a polarizing effect. These things spend more time on the left-hand side, the way I've drawn it, than on the right-hand side. So you're going to have more of the electrons and more of the negative charge hang out over here than on the right. That's what they're talking about. And as a result, the student hypothesizes that salts composed of small cations and large anions should have relatively low melting points. All right. So it should be easy to take less energy to break them out of their, lat their kind of the salt lattice structure when they're in solid form. Select two compounds from the table and explain how the data supports the student's hypothesis. So let's see, these are all salts here, and they're on, on the, if, they, if these were to disassociate, or if you think about what the, the cations would be, the cations, the cations that make up, that make up these, these compounds, You have lithium, lithium, you have sodium, and you have potassium. And then the anions, the anions that make up these compounds, you have iodide, you have iodide, and you have fluoride. So let me write this way. Fluoride and iodide. So which of these are small and which of these are big? Well, let's compare lithium, let's compare lithium, sodium, and potassium. And we see lithium, sodium, and potassium, they are all group one elements. And in general, as we go down a group, as we go down a column in the periodic table, we're adding shells, and so size increases. So size increases as we go down like this. Size, size increases. And so of these, lithium is the smallest and potassium is the largest of these three. So lithium, let me write that down. Lithium is the smallest, smallest, and potassium is the largest of these, of these three. Now if you look at the anions, well, you have, once again, fluorine and iodine are in the same, are in the same group. And iodine is below it. It has way more electrons, and you've added way more shells here, is, is actually the important part. And so you can see that since iodine is larger than fluorine, well, iodide, which is, if either, is, which is when they gain an electron, is going to be larger than fluoride. So iodide, iodide, this one is larger, and the fluorine is smaller. So let's see, lithium iodide is a case of small cation, small cation, and large, and large anion. And so that's actually the, the direction, that's kind of the best example of small, of what the student is talking about. Small cation and large anion, lithium iodide, lithium iodide is a great example of that. And as we can see, it has the lowest melting point 
of everyone on the table. Now let's take the other extreme. What happens if we take a large cation and a small anion? Well, let's see. They don't they don't they don't have that combination here. But let's see if we hold if let's see sodium well sodium flor sodium fluoride yes yeah, so, so sodium fluoride is interesting because we have a larger we have a larger cation so this is a larger cation and then we have a smaller anion smaller anion and notice that has the highest that has the highest melting point and so these are two that are good to compare so part a I'm going to do that blue. Compare compare lithium iodide which has small small cation plus large anion to to sodium fluoride which has larger cation plus smaller anion smaller smaller anion and we see and we see that their melting points their melting points melting points consistent with hypothesis consistent with hypothesis the small cation or lithium iodide so small I don't, I'll just write melting point melting point lower lower and actually much lower than sodium fluorides sodium fluoride melting melting point so at least if you compare those two and they those seem to be good extremes we took the lowest melting point which completely typified what the student was saying as having a low melting point and then we looked at the highest melting point which had a larger cation and a smaller anion and so just looking at that it, it seems to be consistent with the student's hypothesis all right part b Identify a compound from the table that can be dissolved in water to produce a basic solution. Write the net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs to cause the solution to be basic. All right, so let's think about how we can form a basic solution. So essentially, we would need to nab some hydrogens from the water molecules in order to have some hydroxide laying around. And so there's a couple of candidates here that could do that. You have all of these all of these halides, you have the iodide, you have the fluoride. And the important thing to recognize is that hydrogen iodide and you don't see or hydrochloric acid since we're dissolving it in water now. Hydro uh, not hydrochloric, hydroiodic acid is a strong acid. So, let's see. H I hydroiodic acid strong acid. Strong acid while hydrofluoric acid is a weaker acid is a weaker acid so a strong acid is not going to be good at nabbing hydrogens in fact it's a strong acid it wants to give away its hydrogens really 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 badly so so this so the the iodine does not seem like a good candidate the fluor the the or the iodide the fluoride does seem like an interesting candidate so let's let's take one of these let's take one of these candidates out here you could use either the lithium fluoride or the sodium fluoride let's just take i know we've already dealt with the sodium fluoride so let's just keep using that so if you take sodium fluoride sodium fluoride and so let me since we're they want us they say write the net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs to cause the solution to be basic so we're going to focus on so sodium fluoride. Sodium sodium fluoride is what we select. We select sodium fluoride. That's that's the part, the first part. We identified a compound that can be dissolved in water to produce a basic solution. We select that. And now let's draw 
Let's do first the ionic equation, then we'll do the net ionic equation. So if you dissolve this in water, you're going to have sodium cations dissolved in our aqueous solution, plus fluoride anions dissolved in our dissolved in our aqueous dissolved in our aqueous solution. And it is going to be in equilibrium, in equilibrium with, well actually let me draw it, let me draw it this way. Let me draw it this way. Plus, plus H2O, because that's what it's going to react with. And obviously, I don't have to say it's an aqueous solution. It, it, it is the aqueous solution. It's so what's making the solution aqueous. This is going to be in equilibrium with, and I'll go to the next row here. If I was actually taking the AP test, well actually let me just, let me just copy and paste it here just so we don't have to do, deal with it on two rows. So put it right over there. So that is going to be in, that is going to be in equilibrium. Let me get the right tool out. That is going to be in equilibrium with this, this fluoride nabbing a hydrogen. So hydrofluoric acid, we could say, H, HF in our aqueous solution plus OH minus in our aqueous solution. And then you still have the sodium cation in our aqueous solution. And so this is, you can see, we're going to form an equilibrium, and so you're going to have more hydroxide around, so you're forming your basic, you're forming your basic solution. If this was an iodide right over here, then this reaction would go strongly in that direction. If this was hydrogen iodide right over here, this wouldn't be some kind of nice equilibrium. This would be a strong acid, it would go strongly, it would definitely want to get rid of its hydrogens. So that's why we don't want to use hydrogen iodide. We want to use hydrogen fluoride and put it in water, it becomes hydrofluoric. It, it, it's, it's likely to donate, uh, it, 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 we, when it's in its gaseous form or it's by itself, we would call it uh, hydrogen fluoride, but now when we put it in a solution, we can consider it to be hydrofluoric acid. And so if you want your net ionic equation, well, we don't have to worry too much about these sodiums. They're on both sides of this. And so if you just focus on this right over here, this is your net ionic, net ionic equation.